Hello again. Just as promised, we're going to talk about inverses of exponential functions today. Um, in our current book, I'm going a tiny bit out of order. I'm skipping the section right now on logarithms and their properties, but I'm going to come back to it in the next recording because I really feel like logarithmic functions should come next. I really feel like it ex just makes more sense after just talking about inverses and exponential functions. So that's what we're going to do. So we will do go back to 5.3 after this recording. <laughs> All right, logarithmic functions. Uh, any of you who've been through the public school system here in the U.S., you've probably heard of logarithms at least one time, even if you don't remember what they are. But logarithms are the inverse function for, a logarithmic function is the inverse function of an exponential function. If you start out with an exponential function, like the ones we talked about in the last recording, let's say you start out with the generic f of x equals a to the x, remember a is the base and it's some number bigger than zero, and then x is your exponent, then um, you can look at that function, which is a function and is one to one, and you can know that it does have an inverse. Uh, y equals a to the x. You can swap your x and y and have x equals a to the y. And there's the inverse function. But we want to solve for y, and we could do so. We could say y equals log base a of x. <clears throat> but by saying y equals log base a of x, you're basically saying what the exponent is, what y the exponent is, and it's log base a of x. So a log is really just an exponent, and many of the rules you're going to learn for logarithms have to do with being related to exponents, exponential rules. Um, so the inverse function of x would be log base a of x. So a here in the logarithm is the base. It's the same as the base up here in, the, uh, in this exponential function. Um, the x in the logarithm is called your, it's called your argument. You know, that's the, what you're taking the log of. And that log, so you have that log base a of x. Okay, so definition of a log. Your a has to be bigger than zero, and a is not one. That was a, a part of the original definition of exponential functions. a to the y equals x is equivalent to y equals log base a of x. So the log is an exponent, the a is the base, the x is the argument. Now, argument is always going to be positive. Because you're taking, your base A is already positive and 9 equal to 1, and you're raising it to some power. And you're taking a positive number, raising it to some power, so you're going to get something positive back for X if you do that. So the argument X in the logarithm is going to be greater than 0. All right, so let's look at this a little bit further uh, as far as its relationship to being an inverse to an exponential function. Yeah, okay, so let me get my pin going here. There we go. Um, let's start out with the exponential function. I'll just use y instead of x. Let's use the exponential function y equals a to the x, and let's, let's do it in a different color. That way you can see what goes with what. Um, maybe we'll do that in green. So we'll do y equals 2 to the x. Okay, so for that exponential function, we'll just use a couple of values for x. So if you raise 2 to the negative 2, you're going to get 1 fourth. 2 to the negative 1, you're going to get 1 half. 2 to the 0, you're going to get 1. 2 to the 1, you're going to get 2. 2 squared, you're going to get 4. So negative 2 comma 1 fourth. Negative 1 comma 1 half. 0 comma 1. 1 comma 2. And 2 comma 4. All right, so that's, that's enough points to show us the shape. Okay, here's that classic exponential function shape where a is bigger than 1. 
So our A or our base is two. Okay, so that's what it looks like. That's something we've already looked at before. That's nothing new. But what we're going to do next is graph and take a look at the inverse of it. So now we're going to look at the inverse. Is this exponential function y equals 2 to the x? It is a function, passes the vertical line test. It's also 1 to 1, passes the horizontal line test. So I did green earlier. Let's do a deep red for the inverse. Okay, so we're going to do the inverse and swap your x's and y's. Okay, so when you go to do your xy table, now you're doing 2 to the y, so you can, let's use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 for our y values. Nothing wrong with picking your y's and plugging those in to get x. And, you know, you do 2 to the negative 2, you're going to get 1 fourth for x. 2 to the negative 1, you're going to get 1 half for x. 2 to the 0 is 1, 2 to the 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4. So notice the x's and y's got swapped. Where the exponential function had negative 2 comma 1 fourth, the inverse, or if you rather, you could write it as a logarithm, you could say y equals log base 2 of x. You'd rather say that. <clears throat> Then when x is 1 fourth, y is negative 2. So let's plot these. Let's start graphing some of these. 1 half, negative 1. 1 comma 0. 2 comma 1. 4 comma 2. And that's enough points to see what the curve looks like. Now remember, if a one-to-one -one function and its inverse, when you look at the graphs, there'll be reflections across the line y equals x. So let me go ahead and sketch y equals x for you. So this is y equals x, and going back, okay, down here we have y equals log base 2 of x, and then up there, this was y equals 2 root of x. It's good to label things on your graph. Like I'm doing it in color to help you guys to see what's going on, but if you print it out in black and white, you're not gonna be able to see the colors. But anyhow, okay, so there you go. So the y equals two to the x, you swap the x and y coordinates of each point, and you'll get coordinates for y equals log base two of x. It's inverse. Also, you'll see that the green graph, when reflected across y equals x, gives you the red graph. So the green graph, it had a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. But since there's a reflection and a swap, you know, the green graph, your domain was negative infinity to infinity. Your range was the open interval from zero to infinity. But as soon as you do the inverse, that stuff swaps. So as you do the inverse, okay, there it is. as you do the inverse now, you have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero.
your domain is the open interval from zero to infinity, and your range is from negative infinity to positive infinity, all real numbers. So notice for the logarithm, your domain, your argument is greater than zero. And that's going to be true for all of your logarithms. Your argument, this, this part you're taking the log of, has to be greater than zero. And this, this basic graph here demonstrates it. Because if you think about it, back in up here, when you're doing the exponential function, like this space is never going to be zero. And you're taking, and a is greater than zero, and it's not one. So you're taking some non, some positive number other than one and raising it to a power, you're always going to get something positive back. So this y that's always positive has been swapped with your x down here. So now it's x equals 2 to the y. Everything's been swapped. So now this x is always going to be positive. And the y can be negative because you, the y is the exponent one. And you can take, you can have a negative exponent, a zero exponent, or a positive exponent, and that's okay. Um, but raising a positive number to any x, any of those x, real exponents will give you back a positive result. So just, just something to keep in mind. You will have to worry about domains of ones. All right, let's do one more example. This time, let's do the y equals 1 half to the x. So we got x and y. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. That should give us enough points. Okay. You've seen these problems before, so that's why I'm not saying a heck of a lot right now. Just trying to get it quickly graphed. Okay, so once again, horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Domain, and it's going to be to infinity. Range, zero to infinity. Open, inter open interval, zero to infinity. Let's change this to black, and then let's do the inverse. Okay, so inverse, you're going to have x equals 1 half to the y, or y equals log base 1 half of x. So you can have a base that's a fraction. Whatever a can take on, that's what this base here can be. All right, so basically you're swapping your x's and y's because this is the inverse. And there you have it. Okay, so on this one, yeah, again, vertical asymptote, x equals zero, because you got you had that nice swap. This time your domain is open interval zero to infinity. Your range is negative infinity to infinity, all real numbers. But once again, your green graph, the y equals 1 half to the x, is a direct reflection across y equals x, uh, and then lands on the red graph, y equals log base 1 half of x. So 
So let me go ahead and label the two graphs, and then I'll draw the y equals x so that you can see it in there too. All right, so let's see here. This is y equals x. So a green graph reflected across y equals x gives you the red graph. Because they're both they're inverses of each other. All right, so again, if you're wanting to see more about these, there are some lovely function capsules on pages 371, 372. So if you pull up your book, page 371 shows you log base a of x when a is bigger than 1. So that would be like my log base 2 of x graph. Um, and you see the shape, see the general shape, both like drawn or on a calculator. Notice that as you go from left to right, it's increasing, continuous on its entire domain, which is the open interval 0 to infinity. And then it talks about the y-axis being the vertical asymptote. And the graph passes through the points 1 over a comma negative 1, 1 comma 0, and a comma 1. And when you go to the next page, here's the logarithm, the graph shape for a between 0 and 1. So that's like the one I just did where it was log base 1 half of x. So here's the shape for that one. That one's decreasing and continuous on its entire domain. So there's some general generalities for the two logarithm possibilities. And if you are so inclined to keep graphing, which you're going to have to be to do your homework, uh, the rules of shifting, stretching, shrinking, reflecting can be applied to your basic graphs to work with new functions here too. So, you know, that stuff you learn at the beginning of the course for shifting, reflecting, shrinking, etc., it's going to keep coming back over and over again. Uh, for example, let's do a graphing question. Let's say we have first y equals natural log of x. Okay, just uh, a little note, natural log or ln is the same thing as saying log base e of x. So we're dealing with a base e here. You know, we talked about e being that irrational number, kind of like pi, but it's you know two point, etc. It's got those decimals. And we are going to somebody took my calculator here that I usually have right at my fingertips because I wanted to start punching in some numbers. But anywho, um, all right, so when we go to graph that, we've got basically e to the y equals x. So you have, if you have negative 1, that's the same thing as 1 over e. If you have 0, that's the same thing as 1. And if you have 1, that's the same thing as e. And e is close to 2.7 something. So So we know roughly what that graph should look like right here. Okay, but let's say they want you to do some playing around with that and do some shifting or reflecting or stretching or whatever. Um, let's first try y equals natural log of x plus 3. Notice there's no parentheses or anything. So this is the same as saying y equals like natural log of x plus 3. So they're going to be shifting up 3. So for that particular graph, you're going to take your points you have here and shift them up 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 
One, two, three. So it's going to be the same shape. It's just going to be shifted up three. Okay, change my color. And that is different than this. Y equals natural log of x plus 3. That one, you're shifting left 3 units. So you're starting with the black one, shifting to the left 3. So that one ends up right there. And since you are shifting to the left three, your vertical asymptote shifted to the left three as well. So this one is y equals natural log of x plus three. Notice the parentheses around the x plus three. So that tells you that the plus three is getting added directly to the x. That way you can tell the difference between the two. Um, this one over here was y equals natural log of x. And then that one up there was the y equals natural log of x plus 3 without the parentheses. Telling you that it's natural log of x plus 3. Okay. So there, there you go with the uh, shifting. All right. And again, I mentioned earlier domains of log functions. You're, you can't take the log of zero or a negative number. Therefore, the domain of a log function only includes values of x that make the argument greater than zero. I mentioned this earlier, but just need to, this bears repeating. And let me look, show you a couple of examples of finding the domain. All right, let's say you have y equals log of one half x. And you're asked to find the domain. Well, you know that one half x, the argument, has to be greater than zero, which means x has to be greater than zero. So the domain is the open interval from zero to infinity. If you want to, you can graph it and confirm that. Y equals, and you're going to be doing log base one half of X. Ooh, a little bit sticky. Uh, we've not talked about the change of base formula yet. Um, but it doesn't write this in this minute. It doesn't matter because this is log base 10, log base 10 of one half X. Uh, so on your calculator, you can just hit the log button, and that'll do log base 10. And you've got 1 divided by 2x. And the graph. And there you go, the graph. It's a little hard to see, but this comes down and gets closer and closer to the y-axis, but never touches it. So your x's are just greater than 0 on the graph. So that just confirms your domain right there. And then another example, let's say you have y equals log, it's log base 10, thankfully, so we don't have to worry about change of base formula yet. I'm not going to talk about that to the next video. x plus 1 over x minus 5. All right. So you need the x plus 1 over x minus 5. Be greater than zero. Okay, so you have a rational inequality here. So remember the rational inequality, you figure out where the numerator is zero, figure out where the denominator is zero, because either side of those, either side of a vertical asymptote or either side of a place where it, cro where it, it has an x-intercept, your signs can change. So you've got these intervals that you got to test. You got to test everything below negative 1, 
everything between negative 1 and 5, and everything above 5, and see what the sign is. So below negative 1, you can plug in negative 2. You have negative over negative, which is positive. Between negative 1 and 5, you can plug in 0. Positive over negative is negative. Above 5, you got positive over positive. You can plug in 6. Positive over positive is positive. So those two intervals give you something positive. So there's your domain of the log. Right there. You can always graph it and confirm. You might be like, well, how is it two intervals? It doesn't, that doesn't make sense with what I've been seeing in my graphs. Well, because the graph so far has just been plain old log. But this one, plain old log of x or log of something. But this one's the log of a rational expression. So that's a little different. So the graph's going to look a little different. We've got x plus 1 divided by x minus 5 in that argument. Okay, so hopefully the graph will show it clearly. Well, this is one of the downfalls to calculators. When graphs getting closer to the vertical asymptote, you just won't see any more because resolution's not very good. But basically you've got this curve here that's you got a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, or um, yeah, y equals zero. So you've got this curve that's been hugging the x-axis, and then as you get closer to the y-axis, it curves down, and it's coming down, and it, the curve's getting closer and closer to x equals negative one, but it's not actually touching it. x equals negative one is a vertical asymptote. Then over here, x equals five is a vertical asymptote, so the curve is actually way up here in infinity, hugging x equals five, getting further and further away, and then coming down and getting closer and closer to the x-axis, but never actually crossing it. So your graphing calculators can be helpful tools, but you still have to understand what's happening with the behaviors and stuff. Um, just, just be aware of that. But there you go. So there's a little bit about the domain, too. So that should be enough to get you going with understanding the logarithmic functions and the graphs. And next time you tune in, we're going to be hitting logarithms again. We're going to be hitting their properties and be doing a lot of computations with logarithms. Okay, so I look forward to joining you again soon.